Welcome to the Elementor Pro. I'm Jared, and today we're going to talk about making your web page mobile friendly. Now, Elementor has some fantastic tools for this, uh, probably some of the best that are out there. And this is one of the reasons why I've switched from using several other page builders to pretty much using Elementor for everything. The ease in which you can take a page and design it for something like a laptop and then have it look great on a tablet and then have it look amazing on a smartphone without having to create multiple versions of your page is the killer feature. And a lot of other page builders are now doing this, but Elementor still just does it really well and it's easy to go and take a page that you've already designed and make sure that it looks good on a mobile device. So what we have here is just a basic page. We've got kind of a hero image here. We've got some sections, one of them separated with a little bit of a background color. And so we've got three sections with like alternate uh, images and text. It's a common way of doing a page layout, but uh, there are some issues that come into play with this type of layout when you go into a mobile setting. So this looks good. I mean, you know, this is a decent page. It obviously just has filler text and is a very basic example, but it looks good. When we move over to tablet, it still does well in this tablet orientation. It brings everything in tighter. It still has kind of the staggered um, content down the page like I had in the, um, in the desktop version. But when we go down to mobile, we start to see some issues. We've got our header image here, our hero image, which looks pretty good. We've got an image with text uh, below it, but then we have text with an image below it, and that causes an issue there because it's not consistent. Um, so how do you fix that? Well, there is a way to fix that in Elementor. You want to go into the section that is backwards and reverse it. And let me show you how to do that. So we wanna reverse this section here. We wanna have the image above the text, but only on mobile. So we're gonna click on the section. We're gonna go into advanced, and under responsive, we're gonna choose reverse columns on mobile. And you can see it is now reversed columns on mobile. But if we go back to desktop, we still have our staggered look. And of course, same thing on tablet. Now, this tablet view is a representation of the average tablet, but you probably still want to test. These breakpoints from desktop to uh, tablet to mobile are estimates based on the most common sizes of smartphones, tablets, and desktops. So you definitely want to test this outside of, uh, of this Elementor builder here just to make sure because on some tablets, say for example, like an iPad mini, it might be smaller and it may have the issue there of them being backwards. Uh, but then again, on a larger tablet, the breakpoint might be in a different position. And then if you choose to reverse this section, uh, the columns in this section for, uh, for tablet, then you could, you could have some problems there. So tablets are this kind of weird space in between mobile and desktop where there's a lot of variations in screen size, but you want to, um, if you feel like you're going to have a lot of people that use tablets accessing your website, you definitely want to make sure that you test and make sure that you don't create any problems for the people that are viewing your website from a tablet type of device. So there are other things to consider when you are going from desktop uh, you can see this section here. Uh, if I look at this section and I look at the layout of this section, it is a specific height of 480. If I wanted this to be larger on, on uh, desktop, perhaps um, let's go with 720. And then I go down to uh, tablet. You can see I have sizes changed here uh, for tablet and then also for mobile. So what this does, because if I just deleted this out and let it bring in the default from the desktop, it's quite large. It's made that image now taller than it is wide. It's cut off the sides of the image and it's also pushed the content down significantly on the mobile page, blocking any content. When people come to a website, if all they see is your logo, a hamburger menu, and a big image, 
there's not going to be any text letting them know that they've arrived on the right page. We need to have something there. Um, and so we want to make sure that we don't have our content pushed so far down below what's called the fold um, that people don't know where they are until they start to scroll. Remember, the attention span is very small and people will hit the back button or close the tab and go elsewhere really fast. So when you're in this responsive editor mode here looking at mobile, I can set the height of this section uh, specific to mobile. So if I put this down at say 200, uh, I can still have a different size for tablet like 380 and I can still have a large size for desktop like 720 which is still pretty large. I probably would never go uh, too far over 500. 480 is typically where I end up going. The only time that I go much larger with an image is if the whole purpose of the website is visual. For example, a website for a photographer or something like that, you want big images. That's what they're there to see is big images. But if it's a, a company or an organization that has a product or a service or something like that, you want to have a good visual representation, but you also want to have some text there so people can see that they're in the right place. So consider that when you are sizing up your desktop, your tablet, and your mobile pages to be responsive. It's not only just making sure that everything fits on the screen and doesn't fall off the side or doesn't get cut off, it's also making sure that there's uh, representations there on the page of what people need to see to know that they're in the right place. So with that image size like that, that's great. Um, you know, mobile, it's automatically made these images go pretty close to full width with a little bit of white border on the side, which is fine for me. Um, and everything looks pretty good. Uh, the gray section for this section, because I went with alternate white, gray, white, um, looks fine. It doesn't look bad. I'm checking for padding here just to make sure that the spacing still looks good and that it doesn't look weird, like there isn't things pushed up against the edge. In these sections, I have some padding. I'll go back to the desktop. In these sections, I have some, uh, some padding and some margin. And I talk about this in another video where I talk about the differences between margin and padding and all that stuff. Um, this section here has 40 pixels of margin on the top and the bottom. This section here has 40 pixels of padding on the top and the bottom because margin would go outside of that background color and padding uh, includes the background color. Um, so everything's looking good on this page and I feel like everything looks good uh, from a mobile perspective as well. Um, my logo is centered here. When I'm editing a header, I would need to make sure that my header and my footer are also responsive. Um, making sure that my logo was appropriately sized, making sure that my menu operated correctly. And uh, I mean, there's a little bit of a gap here. I might even go in and edit my uh, header here and, and lose all of that additional spacing that I don't need here. And then down in the footer, just making sure everything looks good here. I would probably center this information down here in the footer. And it's showing a hamburger menu down there, which is something I overlooked. I definitely wouldn't want a hamburger menu down in the footer. I would want to have, if I was going to have a menu in the footer, I would want to have a text menu um, because it's, I don't know, it's just weird, I think, to have a hamburger menu down there. So look at your website. Think about the user experience as you're going through the desktop, the tablet, and the mobile aspect. A website being responsive really is just that the website responds to the screen sizes. And by it responding to the screen sizes, that means making sure that the user experience is still good when they go from desktop to tablet or from desktop to mobile or whatever. The consistent experience is going to make sure people realize that they're in the right place and it isn't going to confuse them. So that's how you make a page mobily responsive. There isn't anything crazy about it. It's definitely super easy to do in Elementor. The core idea is just to make sure that the experience is not broken when you jump between different device sizes uh, so that the same experience that somebody would expect on one device is going to be the same experience elsewhere. So that's going to do it for this video. If you have any thoughts or questions, share them down in the comment section below. You'll definitely want to check out my Elementor course, which walks you through everything that there is to know about Elementor. That's linked down in the 
description below. And make sure to subscribe because we're putting out new Element Tour videos every like three times a week basically so you don't want to miss out on those this is a great resource and i want to make sure that you get notified when new videos are put out so click that subscribe button tap the bell next to it to get notifications and we'll see you back in the next video take care